Okay, so I'm going to call a meeting to order at two minutes after five. And we have before us our amended and reviewed uh, personnel policy. My understanding of this are that the red edits were you, Sarah, and the blue and yellow edits are Steve. Uh, no, this is a poll. This, if you printed it out with the track changes, yep. it's, uh, it's going to show edits over over a lot of times, like you know, past reviews of the of the personnel policy. So. The yellow highlighted, the yellow highlighted is what I did post the last meeting that you had. And then the blue, the blue changes on page two and page 10 are what Steve and I went over today. Oh, okay. Okay. So the yellow highlights are really the new, are the stuff that you guys did at the last meeting. What we need to pay attention to. Yeah. Okay, so looking at page one, it's basically nothing, correct? Just right. revised. Page two, we've got uh, a regular week for the highway department consists of 40 hours with times and schedules to be determined by the select board in consultation with the road foreman and road commissioner. Right, but Steve changed that to approved. That was the blue, that's what I sent today. That should be, instead of determined by the oh, select. See, I can't read that. It looks like it's, it looks like it's crossed out. So instead of determined, it's approved. Right, approved by the select board in consultation with the road foreman and road commission. I, the way my, right, the way my printer works, I can't see what's printed on the blue. changing numbers and things like that on page four. Uh, we talked about this, the 2000 and the 2016 Middlesex Drug and Alcohol Policy for all CMV operators. What are CMV operators? Convert commercial. commercial motor vehicle operators? Right. You have a you guys passed a policy in 2016, which directly confronted what you had before in the personnel policy. You right. can't just fire people no, for no, using. No, 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 I remember. But I guess my only suggestion is just because somebody who reads this might not be as quick minded as I am and be able to figure out what CMV means. Should we just say commercial? Yep. Motor vehicle operators. Okay. Wait, sorry, can we just go back to that section um, five hours of service and pay period? Yep. Um, it says, I don't understand what it's the last sentence. The regular pay period runs from 12 o'clock, 1 a.m. Saturday to 12 o'clock, 11.59 p.m. Friday. It's Those are crossed out. You've got your track changes are messed up. So it should run okay. from 12 a.m. Saturday to 11.59 p.m. Right. Friday. I'm on the Google Doc. I don't have wow. anything that is different from that. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Try to open it with a word. You can open it with word, and then just if you want to, just say no changes. Just change it to, uh, you know, uh, no. That's markup. probably why I'm seeing so many typos. That's why you're seeing so many typos because you just have to change it to no markup. Track changes is good, but that's also pain in the butt. Okay, that's better. For further reference, employees should refer to the 2016 Town of Middlesex Drug and Alcohol Policy. Yep. Nothing on the next page. <clears throat> I smashed my hand today again with a hammer, so I'm having a hard time shuffling pages. You should, you should stop doing that. That's what my wife says, strangely <laughs> enough. He's threatening to take away my eight foot step ladder and give me a four foot step ladder. Okay, page six. Uh, selected by selected by the select board each year. Yes, and legal dependents including civil union partners. We discussed that. Right. Yep. OK, 
Okay, so here's here's where I got a little confused when I was trying to read this. I'm looking at the top of page seven. Mm -hmm. And so I don't understand what's going on here with the yellow with the red and the yellow. We just deleted all that. No, you said so the way it reads now is that um your the the policy that you had regarding your health insurance was out of date because it was pre Obama, uh, it was pre Obamacare right. or H S A H A, um, and mm. it's so for Christ's sake, um, mm. why are listeners trying to hold me on this? So should an employee choose a different plan than that designated by the select board? Is that where you're talking about, Peter? Yeah. That, that part, right. The town will pay only what would have been paid to the employee under the town designated plan. And I took that from previous minutes where you guys had discussed this. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's Mary. Okay, go ahead. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm sorry. You guys talk without me here. Oh, Mary. Okay, there she goes, Mary. All right, now you should get in. Hello? I'm in a safe room okay. now. Okay, bye. All right. Um, yeah, we're, on, we're, on, we're just going over the, the accumulated changes to our personnel policy, and we're up to page seven. All right, so... Uh, what I did was I took from other minutes where you guys had discussed what to do if somebody takes a town plan and uh, 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 if someone decides to say, no, I don't want the health insurance that the town chose for me, you can't go down to, you know, a bronze uh, plan and then say, well, the town needs to compensate me for the difference that they're oh, saving. Okay. So, but, so this, the language that I'm looking at, which is red and underlined and then in yellow is the up-to-date final language. Yep. That's what I that's what I added to and if you guys, you know, just to, to clarify. And you also wanted something about the health savings account, so I put that in there too. Yeah. Yep. No, that's that's exactly what I remember that we discussed. Okay. Uh, employees will have deducted from their payroll check a certain percentage. Yeah, we did away with a dollar amount instead of certain percentage for long-term disability life insurance premiums as determined annually by the board. Right. Yeah, that's what we talked about. Retirement plan, that sounds right to me. Yeah, that's old. That, yeah. Yeah, that's all. That's um, all. We, changed, we changed footwear to boots, which is old also. The town offers a boot only allowance for full time highway department employees up to $200 as of their data fire annually thereafter. Yep. 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 Anybody else see anything on that page? No. No. Okay. Page eight, nothing other than the edit on the bottom. The next changes are on page 10. Yep, I'm getting there. I got confused not thinking that the you know it was showing all the old track changes. So anyway, I'm I'm doing better now. Okay, so now we're on page ten, and again I can't read what's under the blue. Um, well, what what Steve said that's just, so it was it was confusing what we had before. What we have now is. If an employee does not use all of the employee's vacation leave in a year, the employee, um, wait, I want to just get into my other copy, may carry over no more than 15 days and just leave it at that because or otherwise- 120 hours. 100 or 120 hours, because otherwise it was just getting wickedly confusing. And, right. and, that's, not, and that's not cumulative. So they carry over 15 days if they don't use it up the next year, they can carry over 15 days, but they can't. Right, if an employee time. does not use all the employee's vacation time leave in a year, the employee may carry no more than 15 unused vacation days or 120 hours forward to the next fiscal year. And, you know, going over, it didn't seem like you needed to say anything more than that. Right, well, that's good. I agree. Okay. Okay, 
And all this stuff about sick leave, sick leave is old stuff, right? That's all old stuff. That that I believe ends uh, any changes you guys made. You addressed the boot allowance. You addressed uh, life and the the life and disability insurance and all that stuff. And I took the liberty of updating your health care policy and getting rid of the and making the drug policy that you guys passed superior to what's ever in the personnel yep. policy. Yep. So with that, Liz and everyone else, are we ready to approve this or do we want to go over it one more time? No, that's fine. I was confused by all these track changes. Yeah. Oh, they're really only like five or six changes or whatever, sir. No, but I was seeing old ones. Yeah. Oh, well, Sorry. I understand. I was looking at it too. And when I couldn't read what was under the blue, that really confused me. <laughs> so, is there a motion to approve our amended I will, personnel policy? I will make a motion that we approve the personnel policy with the changes that we just went over. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So we are going to make these changes effective July 1st, effective immediately. How are we going to implement them? I don't know, but you should put it in the motion. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. I, I, well, we didn't, but I mean, we can have another motion. I guess my recommendation is. I mean, we, I, I think we have two choices. One is to wait until the first of the calendar year, which I think is a mistake. And one is to wait till the start of our fiscal year, which is, I think, what it should be, probably. I think it should be fiscal, too. Then make that motion. Well, I guess we could amend the motion to say that it's effective July 1, 2021. Is there a second to the amendment? I second. Okay, so all those in favor of the motion as amended, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? So um, we're going to have, how can we, is, is there a way, Sarah, to show just the recent, I hate to give them this thing with all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just, I'll just print it out with, uh, you know, no markup. Which is oh, what you do, yeah. and uh, they the road crew has to every employee has to sign the back of it anyway. So yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. You missed my point though. How are they going to know without sitting there with a copy of the old one, and a copy of the new one, what the changes are? I want to show them. I want to show them the current changes. What I don't want to show them is the old changes. Is there any way to do that? Well, what I can do is give them a copy of the personnel policy before this one, uh, the two two before this one, because this last one was really messed up. So, do give them a copy of that personnel policy, and we can highlight it, make copies, and then they can we can give them this one, highlight it, and make. There's the, no make way it. to just. There's no <laughs> way to have it just show the most recent version of track changes. It shows you all the changes, no matter how you. You know, if I if I could have done, oh wait, there's Dorinda. Dorinda knows something. No, well, there really isn't any changes. I think it was more clarification, wasn't it? I mean, what yeah. did you really change other than clarifying what was in there before? You really made no changes. I think it was a clarity. Hold on a second, Randy. I see you. Hold on. I'm just trying to think if there's anything. I mean, you changed, you clarified the boots, you clarified the um, hours that they can carry over, but that was in there previously. We added in things that were missing about the health insurance. Um, we've always had a drug and alcohol policy. Um, I think we just clarified all those issues so it was easier to deal with. Yep. Randy? So I was just going to suggest at the time when you give them the, the policy with the updates to it, you could give them just a, a simple memo that says we clarified these areas that, that tell them exactly what changed. And then they don't have to go digging through it. We, we do that with, with folks that I work with. Um, 
I think that's I think that's easy enough to do, Sarah. Sure. Yeah, I th I, th I think that's a good idea, Randy. Thank you. Does everybody agree with that? Yep. Yep. Well, we Did we change anything about the fiscal year versus the calendar year? I, maybe we just clarified that for um, either carryover or vacation it would have to be fiscal because we talked about that meaning because it was our it was related to our budget, right? Yes. Miranda's nodding her head. Yes, she agrees. Okay. So. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, good work, everybody. We've we yes, Mary. You got to put your hand in the picture, Mary, or I can't see you. Try to unmute yourself. Okay. Sir Dorinda, wasn't one of the issues Dorinda wanted to have resolved is uh, how you calculate the vacation leave? I mean, was that, cal no, not so, you don't need that clarified? Or it, it was clarified how that many hours they can carry into the new year. And okay, there was no what we did was clarify it was according to our budget year and not the calendar year. Okay, gotcha. So um, can I get a copy of this revised one in the cover memo? Because the one I was reading had all these de deleted and it had the date and time it was deleted and the formatting and it was like really hard to follow. Anyway, I would like that. You know, when you get things on Word, you can always just change it to no markup, and it will just mm -hmm. do that with no markup. Well, that now you tell me. <laughs> Mary, okay. we would be glad to get one. Be glad to get one to you. Great, thank you. No problem. I just as soon have it in the in the bowels of the town computer, and I can get it when and if I need it. I have so many personnel policies floating around in my desk. If I grab one, it's always the wrong one. I, I just want to get rid of this thing because it was like 19 pages with all this formatting, deleted stuff. I mean, ugh, awful reading. We get it. We get it. But I think we've I think we've done and thank you, Dorinda, for doing most of the most of the deep dive on this. But Sarah, too, um, clarifying a lot of things that weren't particularly clear before. So and guess what? There's one of our objectives for this year that we can check off the list. We've done it, complete it. The goals. Good that job, was that's right. <laughs> okay, cons considering the Middlesex Conservation Commission's request that Matt Schley. Schley? Schley. Schley. Schley be appointed to one of the two vacancies on the Conservation Commission, action likely. Um, is there somebody here from the Conservation Commission? What have we got? We don't have anyone from the Conservation Commission, but we uh, do have a, we, we, you know, Lee did forward the, the recommendation and he did include um, uh, Matt's letter to the, to the Conservation Commission. So I can, you know, the Middlesex, he said the Middlesex Conservation Commission unanimously voted to recommend Matt Schley's appointment to the Conservation Commission during our May meeting. Matt's letter of interest can be found below. Could you please add his appointment to the next select board meeting agenda? Perfect. Do you want, do you, did you guys get the little, I think I sent you along the, maybe I didn't, the email, but the email that includes Matt's letter. You did. I didn't, I didn't see it, but sometimes I miss those things. So okay. anyway, I'm, if, if, if they're unanimously recommending them, I think we should approve it. If somebody yeah. wanted to make that motion. I move approval of Matt Schley to the Middlesex Conservation Commission. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. second. Uh, I beat you, Steve. You did. <laughs> okay. No <laughs> seconds. So all those of a, in favor of appointing Matt Schley to one of the two vacancies on the Middlesex Conservation Commission, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, congratulations, Matt. Now we're ahead of schedule. Um, Sandy, are other members of the Planning Commission going to come? Should we wait for 10 minutes for them or? Uh, I think the only one we're missing is Elias and I think it would be okay to just move on and Elias, I expect maybe joining in 10 minutes. Okay, but we could we could get updates on the rec field and give him a chance to show up if you think that's a good thing. I don't know. 
That sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah, let's 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 we're ahead of schedule. That's amazing. So updates on the town recreation field adjacent to Romney School. Uh, was there excavation underway? Who put up the fence action possible, et cetera? Mitch, I presume that's you. Oh, uh, that's me, yes. And um I will offer a little bit of an apology. There was as Peter, you noticed a week ago or so, um, they did do some work on the field, which was more than minor work. And I wasn't notified ahead of time, so it kind of caught me off guard. But I did talk to the folks from the that are sort of running the baseball program this year. And they apologized for not doing a better job at communicating. And what they basically said was a guy donated a bunch of material and labor and they felt like they couldn't afford to turn it down. So they just dove in and I advised them that I didn't have a problem with that specifically, but it is town property and neither I nor the select board wanted to be caught off guard by things. So let's do a better job about communicating so these what, kinds of projects in the future. So what, they, what exactly did they do, Mitch? What they did was added a bunch of um, uh, I guess it's top dressing, basically infield. It's not really soil, but it's the top dressing for the infield. It hadn't been taken care of much in the last couple of years. So it had sort of been showing its age a little bit. They got a bunch of material donated to fill that in. And they also ditched up and down the first and third baselines because uh, a lot of water collects behind the field. And when it rains, it gets pretty soggy back there and foul balls basically can become ruined pretty quickly because it's so wet back there. And um, so they, all, that, all that's fine. I, I just think it's outrageous that they just thought it was okay to go in there with an excavator and start digging and yes, and they did a reason. I, I would be a little, I, I think sometimes Mitch, you're a little more friendly than you should be. <laughs> well, what I'm is what I'm saying. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not saying that we tell them they have to put it all back. It's probably good work, but but it's just for for somebody to think it's okay to go in. There. It's one thing if they're raking and shoveling and doing this and that, but to go in there with a full blown excavator and dig and right. Yeah, I, I agree, I, and I I did make and I and you're right. Sometimes I can be a little too friendly for my own good, but. I was pretty firm with them too that hey, we've had problems in the past. It is town property, and let's be clear about you know keeping good lines of communication and making sure we're all on board with this. And well, I, will, uh, I mean the the so the so the direct truth of it is they need permission to do it. Right, communication is fine, but permission is a little yep. different level of responsibility, and I want them yep. to come to. To, to you and you to come to us and say, hey, this is the work plan that's proposed by the baseball people. What do you think? You know? Yep. Yep. That's fine. Yes. And, and I, I don't mind. Hear, and, and believe me, we don't need to hear about some minor work they're going to do. But when, when I saw that excavator over there, I thought, holy mackerel, that's yeah, I, the deal. Yep. I made it clear to them that that's the sort of thing that the select board doesn't like to have is to get a phone call saying, hey, what's going on? on some portion of town property and then have, having them say, I don't know. So well, I, say, hey, I, also, I, I also, not only do I want to know about it so I can tell people who call me, but I want to be sure the work's done correctly and directly, especially when it comes to, to water runoff and all those issues. I mean, that has all very carefully been managed and dealt with around that school. So just to have yep. them go in there and do with an excavator what they think is right. I'm not sure it is. So right, yeah, I just I agree. Maybe I'm being maybe I'm being a jerk and everybody disagrees with me, but I just think it's wrong. That's all. So anyway, what's done is done. They didn't build a pitcher's mound or anything, did they? Um, they the pitcher's mound. It's not like a high school even. It's not even like a high school pitcher's mound. There's not much. There isn't much of a mound there, and. The pitcher's mound, I know your concern, Peter, is that that could interfere with the soccer field. Yeah. Um, that's not the case. The pitcher's mound is far enough away from where the soccer field is laid out that that won't be part of the soccer field. 
All right. Okay. So that's that's not going to be an issue. Place to have a chance to know about that in advance is all I'm yep. saying. Yeah, I did. I did explain that to the guys, and they they said, "Yeah, we we need to do a better job. We will." And um, as far as the outfield is fence, it sex, is it a Middlesex person? Uh yeah. The um, there's a couple of guys. Chris Austin, who lives on Center Road, and Sven Scribner are the two guys who have taken over running the Middlesex portion of Little League this year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And as far as the outfield fence, that sort of shows up a little better because we used to have this green fabric outfield fence that um, had gotten pretty badly worn and actually was, it was mesh, but it was actually fairly solid and wind tended to treat it like a sail and just pushed it over constantly. It was a constant struggle to keep the fence up. I replaced that this year with some basically orange plastic snow fence that I tested it out and it holds up to the wind a lot better. And the guy said, hey, we've seen other fields use this fence too and we're fine with it. I put that up and it's held up really well so far. So I'm happy with that. Um, and we also, I found some old um, basically drainage conduit that was, my home used to be owned by a contractor. So my woods are full of stuff. <laughs> and I actually found a couple of pieces of drainage conduit and I fashioned them into a couple of foul poles and they worked out really well. So I'm happy with that. They didn't cost hardly a thing. So. Good. Any questions on that? Anybody, any board members? Okay. Thank you, Mitch. I, sure. I do have one other question for you is we have had uh, over the years an ongoing discussion of the multi-purpose pad. And I know we've gotten some estimates for, for doing repairs and, this and that. What's the what's the status you, of that? You story? talking about the tennis and basketball courts? Yes. Hey. Um, I am looking into that too. I will probably be able to give you an update in a month or two. I, I'm sort of working on trying to find some opportunities to improve that court because it's in pretty bad shape. I just don't want it to get so bad that it needs to totally be reconstructed and there's no yep. way we'd be able to afford it. So Yep, I understand. I'm, I know those I'm, repairs can be expensive, really expensive. Yep. <clears throat> okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we are back to a joint meeting with the Middlesex Planning Commission updates about projects, zoning regulations, and grants action possible. I don't quite know what the action might be, Sandy, but we're ready for you, whatever it is. I think you're muted, Sandy. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I'm not I'm not sure either, but thank you. And I guess since I did, we have more than a quorum of the Planning Commission here, I did notice this as a meeting. So I will call to order the Planning Commission portion of, of this meeting and just note that it's a joint meeting with the, um, with the select board. And if it's okay, we will refer to the minutes of the select board for the minutes of the Planning Commission meeting as well. Um, so um, thank you. I, I had spoken with Peter a, a while ago about having what I would think could be um, quarterly updates of uh, work that the Planning Commission is doing and provide that to the select board. Um, I want to just start with introductions. Um, I'm Sandy Levine, the chair of the Planning Commission. And here as well is uh, Theo Kennedy, Mitch Oshesky, Elias Gardner and our newest member, Phil Komen. And Phil's here and I wanted him to introduce himself because I'm not sure the rest of the select board knows Phil. Hi, good evening. Uh, Phil Komen from Bear Swamp. Uh, grew up in Middlesex and have been a resident most of my life and just jumped on board this past election season and uh, am filling a one year our remaining one year term. Thank you, welcome. Welcome. Thanks. Um, I, I wanna let the select board know that um, in general, I provide a sort of a monthly update of the status of planning commission projects and sort of a one page and can provide a link to that. If, if, you're, if you're interested, um, it, it, it's usually part of our agenda or part of the materials for the, for the planning commission, but I will, 
I'll, I'll follow that and go over those, those materials for, for this meeting. Um, I'd like to start with the zoning update because I know that that's something that the select board has been very interested in and, and um, curious about. And I'll say that we've been working on this for not quite a year and we've been working with the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission as a consultant and they've been you know, a tremendous help. We divided up the work into four sections um, to do, do the village and the mixed use areas first and then move on to the industrial areas and floodplain because a lot of the industrial areas in the floodplain. Those are the first two areas. The third area would be the rural area, rural parts of town. And the fourth would be administrative matters, you know, updating how the administration of the zoning regulations work. Um, we're almost completed with the first two sections, which is pretty much what we were on, on track to complete. And we have, and we've been keeping it um, in a track changes document of the existing zoning regs. So if you ever wanted to go through and, and look at that, you're welcome to do that, obviously, but you know, um, and we also, I prepared a, you know, more general couple page summary of the changes The if you folks want an overview, um, that's been completed for the village and the mixed use section. It hasn't yet been completed for the industrial and the floodplain section that will be finishing up probably by the end of June. But um, as soon as that's done, I'll prepare the summary for that. Um, we've been doing a fair amount of outreach um, on the zoning regs. We did a survey for, for one of the sections and we'll probably do another survey later. Um, we've emailed summaries to folks who have expressed interest. We've invited folks to meetings and kept them abreast of what's happening. Um, landowners that have expressed interest, um, particularly for the floodplain regulations, we honestly telephoned everybody who had property in the floodplain um, just to let them know about what, what's going on, highlight some of the changes we're contemplating, ask for feedback on that. Um, and by and large, I think we're looking to clarify our zoning regulations and have it be an update, not make you know big major changes to the zoning regulations, but there we will be proposing some changes. Um, it'll be tied very closely to the town plan, um, which the zoning regulations need to be. Um, there may be some small changes to the map, but we're not looking at the moment of making large changes to the, the zoning map for the town. And our overall timing for the project is probably to complete it by the end of 2021 or maybe in early 2022. The work was divided into two fiscal years so that the Regional Planning Commission could work with us as a consultant and be part of two, you know, budget for two different years. Um, that's, you know, a broad, broad overview. Happy to answer, answer obviously answer any questions or we can save you know, overall questions questions at the end or share any materials if people are interested in it. So Sandy, would it be realistic to think we could have whatever hearings we need to have in time and you know, you send it to the select board, we have our head, blah, 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 the whole process and be able to vote on it at town meeting next year? I don't know, um, perhaps. All I'm, all I'm thinking is A, I, as you all know, I hate special town meetings. Um, and that's likely when we would get the best participation and the most interest. So yeah. if we make that happen, it'd be worthwhile, I think, to try and shoot yeah. that goal. Because I, I would hate to get the work completed and then wait all the way through the summer to the fall for the general election. And I would certainly hate to wait a whole other year for another town meeting. So. Anyway, right. Um, the reason I don't know is the, the last the last two sections may take some time, and I know that it still would need to go through a planning commission hearing and through a select board hearing, and they probably each have something like forty five day notices right. as part of them. So I just don't know if the timing works, but that's you know, uh, be mindful of that, and we can see if we can plow through it. A little. So is the, is the process that the Regional Planning Commission prepares, you discuss with them changes that you're interested in and then they have things that they think should be in there and they prepare a draft and then you review it, is that the way it works? It's, it's something like that. Um, they, they, you know, we, we've been focusing, you know, what does our town plan say about these particular issues? 
Um, what what some recommendations that we have? What what are decision points? And those are clearly laid out, and we make those decisions, and then they go back and do the drafting. Yeah. Um, so they provide a lot of resources. You know, what are, what's all the floodplain materials we need to look at, and you know, what's the model floodplain regulation? So they they've been really helpful in sort of providing that background um, to us and highlighting what the decision points are, and then the planning commission, you know, make, makes those decisions and. Um, then, then they do the drafting and we review the drafting at the next meeting. If that's fine, we move on. Yeah. That's, that's, well, that's the, in a friendly way. Yeah. Let's light a fire under them. They're the paid help. <laughs> don't let them be the ones who don't get their work done. Okay. No, no, they're, they're, they're getting their work done and they've been, I mean, I, I think they've been super helpful and have been, you know, doing work in a timely manner and getting it done and, and all, it's, it's all, all I'm suggesting, Sandy, and I, I know that sounds a little snarky, but all I'm suggesting is that, that you guys come up with a timeline so we know if we're meeting that timeline, we can yeah. make a vote on town meeting day and make sure they yeah. know what that timeline is as well. Yeah, so we'll, well, yeah, we'll certainly, you know, look and see and look into to doing that and make, see if we can get it done done earlier. I mean, if it's impossible, it's impossible, but let's not let's not get to november and say hey we should have been thinking about this is all i'm saying yep, yep. Okay. thank you good um the next matter i wanted to talk about is the enhanced energy plan and that would be part of the uh, town plan it would be rolled into that and theo's been doing a lot of, of work on that so i'm hoping he might be able to provide a summary and share and share the update on that okay Thank you, Sandy, and, and thanks to the select board for letting uh, us join you. I think our, ho our hope is that by meeting with you, uh, our planning and efforts can be uh, coordinated as much as possible. This enhanced energy plan uh, came up in 2016 in uh, a law, Act 174, and the specific summary of the act off the legislative website, just a paragraph on a briefly read, kind of captures the energy plan piece it says it seeks to improve this is the purpose of the act and the, and the summary of the section seeks to improve the integration of planning for energy and land use including creating an option under which municipalities and regional planning commissions may engage in enhanced energy planning that results in greater weight to their plans and the energy siting process before the public service board so the kind of the underpinning of where this enhanced energy plan came from this act in 2016 um, we, we, we came upon it kind of with our work as uh, the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission was consultant and it became apparent that we would be uh, eligible as one of the last in a series of towns to take a look at this. And it's not just about the siting when you look a little bit more closely, it's about a whole planning process and thinking about uh, re meeting um, both state and regional uh, renewable energy goals. Uh, how are we going to look at our transportation? How are we going to look at our energy efficiency? Uh, uh, how are we going to look at our housing, which ties into the zoning regs? I mean, ironically, we could do a shorter term maybe on the zoning regs, but in a lot of ways, they should be an outgrowth of the plan. So it might make sense at the end of the day to even have them a whole year later, just to recognize that some of the changes that we have proposed in the zoning bylaws, you'll see are kind of consistent with some of the targets that the energy plan has. But in any case, uh, so we did take advantage of taking a look at that with the Central Mount Re Regional Planning Commission, and they came up with an initial draft that I think we forwarded to, to this uh, body at an earlier time. And just with the pandemic and everything else, we haven't gotten to it, and that's all fine. So this is kind of a revisit a reboot, uh, uh, but a lot has happened since then. We There is already an energy committee in town. Uh, it's kind of been revived. Lowry Sharp has done a great job helming that. And there are a lot of different folks with different types of expertise that have joined the effort. So, so basically this would become an amendment to the town plan, actually not an amendment, by adding, by passing this along with the town plan, it becomes part of the town plan. But when Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission began the consultative work with, with us, they read with us, of course, again, the town plan and made sure that the town plan underpinned the energy plan. And the last thing I'd say, and there are a lot of different pieces of this, and I can go more deeply into the different pieces, 
but um, specifically the four areas for kind of beginning to think about how we meet our renewable energy targets are conservation and efficient use of energy, reducing transportation demand and single occupancy vehicle trips, patterns and densities of land use likely to result in conservation energy, and there's the tie to the zoning regs, uh, the siting of renew renewable energy uh, generation. The other thing is, is these aren't requirements expressed on the face of the document, and I you know, ask you to just take a peek at it. The, these are meant as goals and targets that, that uh, so that's, that's an important thing because I think there can be some justifiable, justifiable concern that if we, like many communities, aren't fully able to accomplish some of these goals, you know, what would the consequence be to us? The other thing is there's quite a lot of flexibility in the plan itself to actually determine how we might meet some of these targets. Um, and the last thing is the first thing I started with this deference before the Public Service Board or the Public Utilities Commission now is not an in, 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 inconsequential thing. And if we do it right, it'll manifest the engagement that we're trying to do with the energy plan uh, as far as, um, and, and the, and, and, and the um, planning commission as a whole, like Sandy was saying, make sure we reach out to the community and get input on that. And so we, in this energy committee, we have a subcommittee, particularly on communication, that's really de devising a way to go forward and the last piece I need to say, I guess, is we came up with a schedule. This is not already before y'all send it af afterwards, where, whereby we would finalize, as it were, the draft that's currently before us at the Planning Commission this Wednesday. We'd go through a public process for our piece. We'd forward it on to all of you. You'd have a public process for your piece. And then we'd be able to vote on it November 2nd. And then uh, basically we, we would have also updated our town plan. Um, by including the provisions of the energy plan. Um, so I hope that was, I think those are the pieces I wanted to cover anyway. And we're really excited about it. I think the opportunity to plan as a community to think about these issues and, the, and, and, and it, it's already obviously uh, gotten a discussion going. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I think that's it. I think the Energy Committee is going to come to the Planning Commission meeting actually tomorrow to kind of talk a little about what they're doing. So, can I ask you a question, Peter? You're asking me a question, Mary? Or no, I want to ask Theo a question. Yes, go ahead. Theo, um, does this have any siting criteria in it, or is that all seated to the 248 process before the Public Service uh, Public Utilities Commission? gives an opportunity for us to um, help define, uh, and I don't, I don't, I, specifics always matter, so I'm not exactly sure which criteria, but it gives the town and, and through this process, which is not, doesn't end when we adopt this, it starts, right? Uh, so, so then we really begin to try to figure out where we would think we would cite things and why and what types of renewable generation and where are there already known constraints that come from the state or where are there are other types of constraints that we may want to emphasize. How does it meet our goal? So, so I guess the, the answer I'm trying to get at is there are some, I think, that are already established. And I, we could, there, there's both Title 24 and Title 30 to look at when you're looking at this energy plan. But, uh, but for the most part, we don't gain authority we don't have. <laughs> you know, we, uh, what we do gain is the ability to have some weight and deference if we as a municipality have chosen to engage in a meaningful way in those four categories I read before. And then, and then our citing preferences will actually be given weight. In other words, I don't know yet if we know, this may be a legal question for town council or something, but whether ultimately the PUC could disagree with us. And even though we had something in our plan, but I wouldn't want to f conjecture that. I, I think it's un less likely, put it that way. But it, you're not, it's not going to be something where they had the first hurdle is to satisfy the requirements of the energy plan in Middlesex before a, as a uh, condition proceeding to filing a 248 proceeding? We have to actually have a compliance designation given to us uh, actually, first, the Regional Planning Commission has to get it from the state. And then if their plan is accepted, then the municipalities that under the energy plan piece only, I'm talking, that are come under conformance with the uh, obligations also become certified uh, through the board, at which point um, 
I think I don't want to misspeak as to whether we have standing or how that exactly works, but, but uh, we have the ability to, ha we do obviously have the ability to have standing, I think, if it's, but um, you're getting me in the weeds, too far in the weeds, not part of my prep. Okay. You know? no. We have to address those issues, yeah. That's what you know, saying. it's really important though, and I, but I don't think there's any adverse consequence to us to go forward with this planning and quite the contrary, I think as we look at capital planning maybe and other things, I think it could be advantageous to have this readiness, not just for citing deference, but for just kind of thinking about our planning. So thank you, Madam Chair, for letting me present. I don't know if there are any other questions or concerns or... So we're gonna pass this on to you in a few weeks, months, right? <laughs> I'll also let's send the schedule. Hey, Theo, can I, I just need to ask Theo clarification. So the four, I just, if you could just go a little slower, the four areas are conservation and efficient use of energy, reduction of single use transportation. And what's the third one before we get to siting of renewable energy sources? Yeah, thank you. Patterns and densities of land use likely to result in conservation of energy. But these aren't meant to be exclusive of a lot of the different subsets. And again, there's quite a bit of flexibility. This is more like a template as much as anything for planning. It's not really a... Uh, it's not yet a precise set of things. We're gonna to have to develop those as a result of if we adopt this. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Theo. Thank you. Anything else, Sandy? Thanks, yeah, a couple other things. Um, okay. There's two, um, two grants that the Planning Commission is working on that I just wanted to provide brief updates on. Um, one is a Route 2 and Riverwalk scoping study, and we're having the kickoff for that tomorrow um, evening for the Planning Commission. We're doing that work with Du Bois and King. Um, and that, you know, overall that that will firm up the costs and the right of way and whatever sort of studies or resources need to be further studied before you go through to, find, to permitting or construction or any further work that would be there. A key piece of that is also to explore um, a river trail along the Winooski River, um, planetary or the Camp Mead folks, Planetary Matters is looking at putting a trail on their property. And we'd like to explore opportunities to extend that maybe in both directions, one towards Church Street, the other maybe towards the Welsh Industrial Park where there's the Walter Kelly Park there as well. Um, so I think preliminarily we would do some, some outreach for that as part of this project. And Tied into that is the Better Places grant, um, which is a grant for Planetary Matters to build two overlooks on their property um, to provide public access to those overlooks on the, the overlooks to the river, provide public access to those overlooks and create a trail mm -hmm. on Planetary Matters property, Camp Mead, um, to connect those overlooks from, from Route 2. Um, we're waiting on a contract from the Vermont Department of Health and the Trails Committee is also involved in this work as well. And I'm hoping Mitch, since he's on the Trails Committee, could provide sort of a brief uh, update of, of their, their work and how that's being coordinated with this grant. Mitch? Um, yes, I, I, I actually talked to Mike Pelcher, who is one of the principals with Planetary Matters uh, today, earlier today, just to kind of touch base and sort of scope out what the timeline might be and all that sort of thing. And he said that um, they've had some preliminary conversations with a bunch of different folks to get some ideas about, I think they already had a pretty good idea about the optimal locations for the two overlook sites and then they've talked to some people about some logical places where a trail might meander through their property. Um, the trail I believe is going to be something like a half mile in length and um, the update Mike gave me today is that they've scheduled a sort of a kickoff event on Tuesday June 1st. They've got some representatives from Green Mountain Power who are gonna be there. Part of this is on lands that I think is the Green Mountain Power has an easement that they said they're interested in working with us on, the, on this as well. Um, they've also got some uh, folks from the Vermont Youth Conservation Corps and also the Friends of the Winooski who are interested in this project and seeing if there's input or services they might be able to provide down the road as well. So um, 
as I said, several people are going to have uh, attend this kickoff meeting on June 1st to kind of look the place over. And um, a real rough idea is that they're sort of planning that they want to build the overlooks first before they get involved too much in actual uh, the trail building part of this because they don't want they don't want to sort of provide a thing where they're encouraging people to meander down this trail and kind of get to the places where these overlooks are and not have the sites secured and safe first. So that'll be following. And I think after this June 1st meeting, they'll have a better idea of a timeline and all this. So I think largely it's going to occur, occur over the summer and maybe into the fall, but we can provide you with more definitive timeline when that becomes clear. But um, that's a very rough overview. And if you got questions, I'd be happy to field them or research them as needed. So we are in the throes with our legal counsel of negotiating a permanent easement right away. I'm not sure what the right word is. So this will be forever. They will not be able to close it off in the future, correct? My understanding is our town town lawyer is will be involved in creating an easement. I don't know the terms of that. Obviously, the town needs to be okay with it, and the planetary matters folks need to be okay with it. I think from the town's perspective, you want to make sure there's always going to be public access there. From what I've heard from planetary matters, they want some flexibility to move the trail or the easement if. So, you know, some they, they don't always know. They don't know now exactly how that property is going to be used. No, I, and I understand that, but I think, I think the uh, the easement. I just don't want to lose track of that easement. No, that's that, that that's definitely a key a key part of this. And yes, there will and that they, that there would be permanent public access to these overlooks is yep. is that that will be part of it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, the, the remaining matters are all sort of in the, the administrative um, realm. Um, one is uh, the Planning Commission had talked about having an, uh, having an assistant zoning administrator um, to help out when the zoning administrator either has a conflict or is not available. I know that's something that the select board had raised as well as the zoning administrator. When we talked about it, we said we'd like to advertise for that. There wouldn't be a lot of hours for that. We want to see who might be interested in doing that. Um, but it's not anything that we actually have any authority to appoint or even create. So I didn't want to, I didn't want the planning commission to go rogue on this and, and see, you know, is it something that the, the select the board is interested you would, in? You would make a recommendation to us and then we would appoint them. Isn't that yes. I mean, that, that's how we were envisioning it, but I guess before we went too far down that road, I wanted to confirm that that's something that the select board was interested in considering. Well, I think we're definitely interested in considering unless somebody objects and in terms of the process, I believe that is the correct process, right, Sarah? I don't know if the statute speaks about assistant zoning administrators, but a way zoning administrators work is that they generate from the uh, planning commission every three years, and then the the, the select board signs off, uh, approves. Right. So yeah. our I think our presumption was that it would be the same for an assistant, and I think makes logical sense. I just think I just think having a second person available for all those things you've talked about uh, is important. So okay. yeah. So, yeah. We no, will we'll, we'll yeah. plan to move forward with that. And then- um, I just had his hand up, Sandy. Hold on. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm just gonna just make a quick observation that several years ago, uh, Marika Gillis was the assistant zoning administrator. So you must have had a process by which she was appointed, so. Nah. Oh, or, or not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Those were the good old days, Mitch. I think we okay. just did it in the old days. In okay, the old days. Uh, Okay, fair enough. Okay. Um, the, uh, the, um, the other two are um, administrations. Uh, I've been working. Are you with, back? Oh. 
Oh, sorry. I've been um, working with Elias and the other planning commission members on sort of setting up a place where we can keep and have publicly available the documents that the planning commission generates. And um, I guess I'll, I'll ask Elias to talk about it, but I think it's been super helpful to have the, you know, basically a virtual filing cabinet that, you know, anything that the planning commission generates can be publicly available and can be provided to somebody with a link. So I'll let Elias explain that better than I can. It's time to put the screens in your house, Liz. You seem to have a bug problem. Um, so sorry, kind of basically, no, that's fine. Basically how it started is we were putting links on the what's next Middlesex website, the planning commission tab, and I just send you a quick link, but, um, we, you know, it's a little cumbersome to add documents to a website. So what we've sort of evolved into is a, a Google drive folder and, you know, the planning, the what's next Middlesex website has linked go to various Google drive folders. So we can easily put documents into the like planning commission drive and they're accessible to planning to anyone with the link they're publicly viewable to anyone with the link and those links are available on what what's next middlesex shouldn't they be so on the town I, website also i'm sorry what shouldn't those links be on the town website also well, that would be a next really great step i mean honestly if the town website had those links we could do things like put our own meeting agendas in and not have to sarah i don't know the legalities but it's it would be a good thing to talk about i, I don't, don't know the legalities i mean it, it would be nice we don't have right right now what you have with a google drive which is you know great and that someone could come in and just dip right into that and i'm not sure how you put that in that website, but it's worth exploring. It's not, I just don't see it with a WordPress, unless you know how to do it. I don't see a word, a way to do that with WordPress. Yeah, I mean, with WordPress, if you had, if you just had a link to the Google Drive, then- Oh, well, that, we could do like, a link to the Google Drive. Drive. I think all you need to have is a link to the Google Drive. Well, then, yeah, then, exactly. then that's no problem. Okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah, I think, it, I think it has potential to be really helpful for beyond the planning commission if we find a process that works. Yeah. Well, I just think, you know, if select board members, community members are interested in what's going on, they can go in and see uh, the various reports and the work that's getting generated. I think that's all helpful. Great. Great. Thanks. Um, and lastly, just a quick update on zoning permits. We've had, I think, three in the last few months. Um, couple of subdivisions. There's one that's under appeal, um, site plan review for an office uh, building for Kingsbury um, next to the police barracks and right by the park and ride. And we have um, an upcoming hearing for uh, storage units in the industrial park, and that will be in early June. And Theo wants me to tell you about our award. <laughs> Yeah, so Middlesex got two, two planning awards this year, one for the walkable Middlesex study, and secondly, for, for the planning commission itself is sort of the citizen planners of the year. Go team. There you wow. go. Congratulations. Very good. Congratulations. Very good. Sandy and others. And, uh, believe me, there's a lot, a lot of others involved in that. So. Yeah. But so that's, that's our update. And look, I'm even on time. So thanks. Uh, again, happy to answer any questions, but I just wanted to you know, have the opportunity to provide the select board with an update because we, you know, we're doing a lot of things and we don't want to get either too far ahead of our skis or, you know, we work at cross purposes with select board to make sure that we're, you know, you, you know what we're doing and we have input from you so that um, we can work together. I thought this was very helpful, Sandy. I hope the other board members agree. I mean, yeah. there's a yeah. lot of important stuff you guys are involved in, and the more we know about it, the better off everybody's going to be. So, yeah. good job, you. Sandy. You and your team. Great. Uh, and Sarah, you'll you'll put a little tickler thing on your calendar. So I know Sandy probably won't forget in case she forgets three months hence. We'll. It feels like Sandy and I talk every day. I know. I'm just, just <laughs> I already put out a notice that has the three dates in it. Yeah, so she's, our, she's also notices. one step ahead of me. <laughs> yeah, I saw. I saw. Okay. Thanks, so, Thank you. Can very I much. ask a question to Sandy? Yes. 
Sandy, when I was, I read the uh, Menashe decision today, and I know you get a de novo hearing. Is that de novo hearing in front of the environmental court? I just don't remember. Yes. It yes, is. It, it is for the environmental court. And just so everybody knows, I'm recused from that as a planning commission member. I was participated as a neighbor in that in that project. And, and, and so can they address the issues that were raised in that um, decision? When they have the de novo hearing. Can Theo answer that? Sure. Theo, can you answer that? You're asking whether the applicant can raise all the issues that they raise in the initial application again before the environmental. I denied it and said you didn't address this, you didn't address this, you didn't address this. Mm -hmm. Can they address them in a de novo hearing or are they precluded from, uh, uh, you know, I just don't know. Can they expand the scope to address the reasons for the denial is my question. I don't want to miss answer. Honestly, I think they probably would be if you got that far. They certainly can address any of those things by reapplying, but the actual appeal itself is going to challenge the decision. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I know council should be the one really speaking to the select board about it. So, um, so we're, I mean, and what's the role of the planning? I, I mean, I just, I, I'm sorry, I just say to one quick thing. It was a 45 day period, which I actually don't know whether uh, has lapsed that we're actually allowed at least according to council to have um, and to, to change our decision. Um, and um, opposing council, I can say, made it very clear to me that she thought I should have, <laughs> uh, which is a very odd thing to have happen. But um, nonetheless, um, but it, I think I mean, what's the exact question? Hiring um, uh, um, the lawyer from Berlin, right, to represent us. I don't know who you chose to hire. I didn't. I, I had been working with Rob Halpert on it during the early yeah, Rob, days. Is he going to be? Is he going to be representing us? Have we made a decision on that? I thought we had. Yeah, Sarah. I had a conversation with Rob today about this case. That's probably best to discuss in executive session. Okay. All right. I just maybe I should discuss all this in the executive session. I just wanted to know how it worked and how much there is, but. And, the, and, and if the planning commission can be of any help at all, the ones that were involved, please, please let us know. And uh, I do think that it highlighted some opportunities as we look at the zoning bylaws uh, yeah, on a kind of forward place where we could be less ambiguous, perhaps. But um, Okay, well, we shouldn't probably discuss it in an open session. So. I hope I didn't exceed the boundaries. So um, it's a pretty challenging case. And Thank you. Um, so thanks all. And I think the planning commission is done with our portion of this meeting. If somebody wants to move to adjourn the planning commission meeting. I'll move to adjourn the planning commission meeting. Elias moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mitch seconds. All those in favor of planning commission members? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet everyone. Bye. For the good Bye. In the awards. Bye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Before uh, before we get on to the minutes and the other business items, uh, Vic, do you have anything by way of a highway report for us? Um. Yeah, I, I wasn't planning on it, but yeah, we do. Um, we have. We have a, uh, a set up to do some uh, ditching with that grant money that we had from uh, the, the uh, budget and it's hire uh, Jeff Newton Dubois for a couple of trucks and an excavator. And uh, I don't know if this is really uh, important or not, but uh, I brought up the point that we should get some prices because it's over $10,000 according to our policy, but Steve thought that uh, it was budgeted, so we didn't. And, uh, I think at some time we were going to talk about purchasing policy, but for some reason, uh, I don't, I guess we'd have to do that in the future. But anyways, for uh, 
I got a couple of other quotes uh, from people in town, and uh, it appears that uh, there's not many dollars between them, but uh, when you're talking uh, that amount of hours, it could amount to three or four thousand dollars. So uh, Jeff is going to send us their their Jeff Newton from Do Boys is going to send us their uh, their prices and. Uh, We'll probably move ahead on East Hill right now. The, the potential is for uh, ditching on East Hill from somewhere down around the Af Ray Hickory's uh, up up as far as we can go where it uh, is always muddy. I'd like to let it <clears throat> at least get up to uh, somewhere where Bill Cathy uh, lives, if we could. And uh, our crew has been... Uh, uh, removing berm and ditching over uh, from uh, Route 12 uh, intersection to Shady Rail up towards the school. And um, they're going up Government Hill and because uh, we ran into some issues up there and possibly uh, it, maybe it's just unplugging a pipe, but maybe replacing it. And there. Oh, that, go ahead. No, I think, go ahead, Steve. Vic, I just, I just wanted to clarify. I, I wasn't questioning the the about getting giving getting different quotes for for work. Mm -hmm. That's fine. What I was saying was that for we didn't have to have approval of the select board uh, to spend that money uh, because it was a budgeted item. That's all I was saying. I wasn't saying getting the prices is a good idea. Okay. Yeah. No, I. Yeah, I guess I just read that different than you, and I guess it really didn't make a difference, uh, make any difference anyway. So, uh, like you said. So, uh, well, for two reasons, I think it's a good idea. I mean, spreading the work around a little bit is a good thing, and if we can save, like you said, those three or four thousand dollars, you put four or five of those together, all of a sudden you have real money. Yeah, so, exactly. Right. We can buy some right, I, and, and, and else we need. What? What's that? We can buy some rubber boots or something else we need. <laughs> yeah, we could buy the road commissioner uh, a pair of boots. Um, any any update on the I get I get emails and phone calls every week about those damn speed signs. They were supposed to go in this week. Right. Have we seen those guys yet? Are they up there? Is it happening? They're supposedly up there. Okay. Good. <laughs> I don't ride through Shady Rail very often. No, I, I don't either, but. Is uh, that supposed to be the new science on Shady Rail? No, Putnamville. 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 Oh, yeah, Putnam. yeah, I haven't been over there either. I can check it out. It's not far from my house. I can see if they're up. I don't, haven't been yeah. there. Don't every day. They don't know whether they're, whether they're there or not. I just, you know, it's been one, one postponement after another, and the people are frustrated, and I don't blame them, and. You know, before we know it, it's going to be the next school year, and those signs aren't going to be there. So I'm really hoping they're going in. What did you say, Randy? You they are or are not? Bill drives that road every day, and they are not there right now. I think they ran into a problem. They they were going to go. Uh, Lafayette was going to go do it, but then they had to go, not get a permit, but they had to check in with the uh, district, uh, the state of agency of transportation, and I have never heard back. Uh, how that came out so evidently not good but they are they, had, they are. i thought we had all the state permits i did too yeah all of a sudden there was a new one but then again you've never worked for the state <laughs> amen for that yeah. I, guess, I mean you know god damn it <laughs> come on guys yeah i hear you peter well i just want i just more than anything else i've i've told people I've told three or four people it's next week, it's next week, it's next week, and next week never comes. And now they want to know who they can go over my head. I don't know. Maybe they go to the governor. I don't know. That's where <laughs> I'd start. I'm going to start there. It's uh, I don't know. I don't know. 823333, Peter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's very frustrating to me because it shouldn't be, it doesn't seem like it should be that complicated a thing. And my understanding was. As of last fall, and correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but weren't all the permits supposedly in place? 
I think all, all the permits were in place and the only thing they had to do was to get in touch with the state when the work was to begin. Right. And, and that was supposed to start. And I know Shane said he talked to uh, Lafayette's guy, Jamie, and, uh, and then something came up with the, with the state. And, and uh, I apologize. I haven't followed it up and I haven't heard anything. I'm sure uh, we'll follow it up. We'll check well, on. Stir them up. Yep. Keep As it. I said earlier, light a fire under them. Okay. <laughs> a big fire if you can. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's just, it's embarrassing. I mean, and I, I keep telling people it's the state, it's the state, it's the state, it's Lafayette, it's Lafayette, it's Lafayette. But guess what? They blame us. Yeah. Oh, so it's embarrassing. Anyway. And um, the other thing, the other thing, we got a bunch of calls on, uh, on uh, fluoride and dust this weekend. It's several calls. And, uh, of course, we go from. Yes, I'm not really familiar. No, there's no in between anymore. What's that? We go from mud to dust. Right. And I guess, I don't know, Steve could probably uh, shed some light on it. I, 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 we had a guy, uh, we had uh, Gorman was, uh, was supplying it before. And then for some reason we swapped last fall or Paul swapped last fall or somebody did. Anything about that, Steve? No, I, yeah, I know that Paul swapped a, a lot of it was the price, but but I don't know any further than that. And then Shane said this guy was not uh, was not bringing any stuff in, and uh, something about a, a bigger container. And he said today if he didn't he was going to call him at eight o'clock or nine o'clock this morning. And if uh, uh, they're giving him a hard time, the way I took it, and that he would that we would call call the old company and they said yeah. bring it right up. Yep. I said, that sounded like a good solution to me. Yep. And we got, yeah, let's, the two things I have on my radar screen are, are chloride and potholes, yeah. our, favorite, our favorite springtime subjects. Yeah. Um, any, any update on the, on the greater delivery, proposed delivery? No. Okay. Nothing. So as far as we know. July. Official. Okay. Any questions? Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Victor. Yep. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but it's good to know what's uh, good to know what's going on. It's good to have you part of these meetings. Okay. Thank you. Um. Okay. Moving on to other business. Approval of the May fourth Select Board meeting minutes and the minutes of the May eleventh Special Select Board action. Likely. Do we have a motion on the? I don't know if we do them together or do them one at a time. We should probably do them one at a time. So how about a motion on the May 4th regular select board meeting minutes? I'll move that. Thank you, Mary. And is there a second? I'll second. Thanks, Liz. Uh, all in favor of approving the May 4th select board meeting minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. And how about a motion on the special select board meeting uh, May 11th? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, Liz and Liz and Mary, and maybe yeah. Steve too. Anyway, we've got plenty. <laughs> um, all in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we've approved our minutes. Thank you. Um, we did receive a letter about the makeshift access on Vermont Route 12 for Fris for Ultimate Frisbee at Wrightsville. I noticed that somebody had put that that access in there. Does anybody know where who did that? Where that came from? I mean, that's that's definitely not on town land, and it's certainly not off a of town highway. So, no, nope. I don't have any idea why it's even our issue. Yes, yeah, Sarah. Well, um, I discussed this two years ago with V Trans when they AOT called up. We were dealing with the Culver Hill Road. <clears throat> I mean, maybe even before that. And because this has been here now for going to maybe almost three years that that access has been there. And I said to him, you know, how do, is that permitted? I mean, how did that curb cut happen? I think it's blind. We have I've had complaints and they just blew me off. They just didn't seem to think anything of it. I don't even know. I, it was just created. 
And I drive that every day and it's not good, but um, clearly this person in town who wrote the letter would like the board to do something. I tried to explain that it's not a town road. We don't own the town land, but um, I'm just wondering if the board would want to consider uh, asking VTrans to give that a look or signage or something, you know? Can you explain where it is? I had a hard time. Yeah. Is so if you if you're coming down Shady Road, Liz, and you and you're about to turn off right almost directly across from that Shady Road intersection, as you're coming down the hill, there's like a little pocket. Peter, let Sarah explain it. I'm I can't hear. Please. <laughs> I'm sorry. So right there, there's like a people are they've kind of they've actually just kind of driven into the woods and they park their cars there to play frisbee. So then they come out, but there's, it's before you get to the Wrightsville, the proper Wrightsville entrance. It's right as you're coming down the hill, you'll see it right on your right-hand side. And on the left-hand side is the turn, the first turn to Shady Row. Yeah, okay. I know what you're talking about now. Yes, okay. there's that weird little parking area, but it's on Route 12. It's on Route 12. Yeah. Well, I mean, the whole issue too about having everybody park around that V. First, I thought it was a bunch of bikers. And I'm like, why didn't they go down? To our the park but they do that every sunday don't they there's a lot of cars there yeah it's getting very popular it's getting very popular i mean like 12 or 15 cars there so i don't understand though the traffic hazard it's blind because because it's on that gradual curve so people are coming along and i i think the concern is that People are in the habit because they know the Shady Real Road is there. They look there, but they don't realize that I people see. are coming out from the other side. Yeah. It's pretty dangerous, I think. Okay. Peter. Yes. Would you like me to give uh, my friend at uh, ALT a call and uh, maybe what you need there? I, I saw that and I had no idea what was going on. This was you know a couple of weeks ago, but uh, maybe... Uh, would would help uh, those cars are it, it does block the view how about no parking signs would get rid of those uh, cars how about that blockade <laughs> yeah or no because there are a lot of cars parked all around that intersection yeah there really are well i think we should i i i mean i don't know what the answer is the answer is i don't know what the answer is victor but it's it's a problem, and I don't know whether they affirmative, affirmatively created the problem or whether they just uh, allowed it to happen and nobody did anything. I mean, it literally looks like they cut down some trees and created a little road off there. And I don't know. Did the, did the, the isn't that on town land? Do it? I don't know. It's is, not town is, land. Huh? It's, it's not, not our land. town land. I thought it was a part of the Wrightsville beach. It is, but isn't that a group owned thing? Yeah. I think Vic should call the the uh, the transportation agency. Remember they helped us out with that place. Um, I mean they didn't at least they responded um, right below Culver Hill Road. Same thing, right? You can't see left or right, and that's not a Middlesex problem, but it is a, it is a problem for people who live in Middlesex. Right. I, I think it's fine to have Vic call him and see what he says, but I, I think we should definitely uh, definitely pay attention. And when they're when, when all those cars are parked parked around the triangle there, that is us there. So Well we um, ought to think about what we want to do there because there's a lot of cars there and a lot of traffic. And it's usually Sunday morning is when it's really, really busy. Is it because is it, is it because Wrightsville Beach is not yet open, so they can't pull in there and park, so they're parking there? I don't, I don't know. Because they're playing this. I think it's for the Frisbee golf. It's the Frisbee golf, and I don't know. They have to probably go over the fence, even though the beach isn't open, because we're, the Frisbee golf course is down by the beach, isn't it? It's right below where that parking area is. The bunch yeah. of I don't play on it, but it's right below that. Sorry, just for clarity. I I was wondering what infrastructure, if any, is ours, and you're saying none of it is. We well, don't know. The triangle on on our side of the road is ours. That's yeah. In our, that's in our right of way, but the other side of the road, none of it is ours. I don't believe. We don't really know what the boundaries are because 
<laughs> Walker Fletcher Co-op owns a lot of land, but I don't think they own anything up that far toward the beach. Well, Peter, is it, if you come down Shady Rail, and uh, down the Shady Rail Road, and like you're going to go to that slip ramp towards Montpelier, or you can yep. go down straight and turn left, go towards Worcester. Yep. That's uh, state land right there in that intersection. Because I, I had that job from Montpelier to the other side of Worcester paving, and I wanted to make that a 90 degree turn. Yep. And pull that pull that out to take out some of that curve. And I had it all drawn up and everything, but then they didn't want to do it. They didn't well, want it's this, it's probably a lot of that triangle, if not all of it, is in is in the state right away. Correct. That's but what I'm saying. Our, la our land is all I'm saying. Right. Um, no, I'm not arguing that way. I don't understand. Maybe we should reach out to the Wrightsville Beach people. I don't understand. If the beach is closed, that's one thing. But why can't they open up the gate and let people use that parking lot? There's a big parking lot down there. Right. Well, you know, we should call, have Jane, some, Vic, you could call Jane Dudley, too. Isn't she our rep on the, on the uh, Wrightsville Dam? I mean, the Wrightsville Beach Association. I'm not sure. I don't know. She is. Well, I know Jane is. I'm just saying you could call her. Well, who knows Jane? You know Jane? Well, wait, I, I think call Jane. What's that? Sir, why don't you, if you wouldn't mind, why don't, why don't you just ask her those questions and see what okay. her response is? But I mean, the, the underlying question for me is, is why can't the, why can't the access to that part, that huge parking lot be open? Well, to be fair, I mean, to, to my observation is that even when it is open, they still park there. It's just closer yeah, to where you play golf. If the parking lot's available, then I say we we put up no parking signs there. We don't own the land. Yeah, it's not. Well, not the, state, right. get the state to put them up. I don't know. Well, the that's what this letter was about. This, the letter was saying, the... could you could you do something? Maybe write VTRANS and say, hey, the select board would like you to address this issue. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That we can do that also. Well, didn't they have the no parking uh, signs in front of uh, the Red Hen down here? Did they? I don't know. I don't know. You know, back in the day, they put oh, them yeah. up. Oh, yeah. Cars were out into the traveled way. Well, there were cars parked all over the place there the other day, too, I would tell you. Sunday, I think. Anyway. Okay, so let's, Vic, what you can do well, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's have Sarah reach out to Jane Dudley and at the same time uh, write a letter to VTrans on behalf of the select board. Does that make sense to everybody? It certainly does. Yes. Okay. And, what do you want uh, me to what do you want me to say in that letter? I want you to say concerns have been expressed by resident Middlesex residents regarding the uh, frequent use of the roadside area there for parking and also the the de novo or whatever the right word is parking lot that's been a cra created across the uh road in Phelps park okay it's a, it's a clear and present danger <laughs> i'd hope yeah anyway anyway just to, to see what they see what they say i, I don't uh, i think it's great that people are using the right bill but i but i don't want anybody to get killed there <laughs> i i do have another quick question on that subject so our little our little park up Shady Rill there, that gate has been open all winter long, from my observation. Yep. And God only knows what's going on in there now that the now that the snow's melted. Has the state just thrown their hands up in the air and they're not nobody's taking care of that anymore? They just leave the gate open? Well, I think they also removed the facilities. They they removed they took the bathroom down? Well, I think they did something like that. I mean, that is the because that hasn't been that hasn't been all during COVID. No one's been doing anything with that park. Uh -huh. It's going to turn into a rifle range if they don't do something. Well, don't give them any ideas. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's bizarre. I thought all the all the years and all the hoodoo about locking and unlocking that gate, and all of a sudden it's just wide open. It's high school prom season. That's a high danger time. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a grumpy old man. I don't know. <laughs> Who's the grumpy old man, Peter? I probably am. I, I acknowledge it. My kids think I am. They're ready to put me in the home. 
<laughs> oh, you sound it tonight, Peter. <laughs> You're doing a good job of it tonight. Thanks for your support, Victor. Maybe You're welcome. Let's, say, let's, get after, let's get after these people. They get after us. I'm ready to get after them. Anyway, enough, enough said. So we have a little bit of a plan there. Or not a little bit. We have a plan there. Um, we do have an application for an access permit. And Shane, uh, Shane signed it. I do have a question in that when I look at the diagram, I guess you can't see it on the camera. But anyway, when you look at that diagram, yeah. it looks like they're putting in a culvert, but they're not creating a driveway. It, it, it looks crazy to me. I thought that too. And then they're going to put, um, they're going to have steps and seed and hay for the pedestrian. Yeah, I mean, it's. I, I just didn't really understand. I, I I read that and I didn't really understand what it what it was. They're not they're not doing away with their other driveway and creating another driveway. And is it just a temporary access so they can do this repair work, or is it permanent access? Shane told me that it was a temporary culvert so that they could access over there to do that work. Okay, perfect. That, well, that, they are they going to remove the culvert or they're going to keep it there? Temporary means they remove it. So it should say, and I didn't read all the boilerplate in this permit. Yeah, I didn't read all if, of it. Too. If it's temporary, it should somehow, somehow, some way in here, it should say that and when it's to be removed. Because I'll tell you, my experience with those culverts is once they're in there, they're never removed. And then they plug up and the road washes and all hell breaks loose. I have no problem with a temporary culvert. But I guess what well, I would what I would say is I'm willing to sign it, but I think it should say that it should be removed in some period of time, and I don't know what the right period of time Well, is. I mean, if you look at the thing and it says road form and commission comments after Shane's signature, yep. we could add a provision there um, that says uh, the culvert to be removed no later than and then put in a date. Yeah. And so I don't know, uh, Vic, do you have any idea how long they need? No, no, I don't. Why don't you, why don't you put down that, that a certain length of time after their work is completed rather than pinning their work to a time frame? The only problem I have, have with that, and I can't remember who it was, but it was quite a few years ago, their work that was supposed to take three months took five years. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you, Vic, why don't you check with Shane and we can approve it subject to adding that language um, right. you, and I don't know I mean 90 days 120 days I don't know what the right time is but let's get the thing pulled out of there okay so I guess I guess we don't usually uh we don't usually do a motion on these, do we? As long as Shane's approved it. No, we don't usually, but we're making a motion. We should in this case because we're we're adding something. So, do you want to make that motion, Mary? Please. So, I move that we approve the application for uh, a curb cut, subject to um, the commission, the road foreman or commission of roads, um, adding a and an end date by which the culvert has to be removed. All I would suggest is you amend that to say a temporary curb. That a te wait, yeah, move approval of a temporary curb cut. Yeah. Subject to um, the, the road commissioner adding an end date uh, of a specific number of days after consultation with the road foreman. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thanks, Phil. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Peter, are you going to sign this, or do you want me to leave this in the office for you to sign? Uh, yes, that's fine. Yeah, but you shouldn't sign it until they get back to you with a date and fill that section in. Okay. What I can do, Sarah, is I'm going to be away for 10 days starting Thursday morning. Okay. But if you... If you send it to me, I can I can sign it and scan it back to you. And then you should you have a copy right there. Yeah, but this doesn't have the date on it. 
Oh, I see. You're saying you could also just sign it. We could just wait for the words and we can just read them in later and then submit it. But whatever you want to do. I'm going to go over to Liz's house and put the screens in and I'm going to bring some bug spray. Now she's starting to scratch. That's a bad sign. Why does our yes. new porch does not have the screens yet, okay? We're still working on that. She could also just go in the house. <laughs> just saying, just saying. So I hope people come to the fire department on Thursday, by the way, for a field trip. Yeah. I will not be there. You know that, right? No, I do. I'm sad. What time is that? It's at 6 o'clock. 6 to 7.30. Bring your children, bring your mask, and have fun. Okay, I don't have any children here to bring, so I guess I won't be going either. <laughs> well, then bring yourself. All I, all I would suggest, seriously, for uh, for any of you that are, have not been to the fire department recently, it would be, I've been there quite a bit. I know exactly what's going on down there, but, or I think I do, but. Uh, That's why I might was thinking of going, because I haven't been there since we bought that last. We need to check it out and know what we're talking about, both for this, both for, uh, for the Liz's grant, but also for. Uh, our discussions with the discussions with the fire. When is that? Is that? Eric, he's giving the tour. He's a really nice guy. He's one of the volunteers. Yep. What's his name? Eric Medivier. Oh, he Matavier. 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 Mm. Well, I mean, that's the way that Matavier is in Waterbury pronounce it. I don't know how to pronounce it. I just did it phonetically. Okay. So, um, when's the meeting of the capital budget thingy? Well, that is our meeting this month is to go there. And um, I mean, it's just a field trip. We're not having a meeting every month. Okay. So I'll it's on the calendar. It's on the front porch. Con so yeah. Could we, just, could we just back up a minute, Sarah, so I understand what you expect me to do here? Do you want me to sign this and drop it off or scan it to you? Or do you want me to wait until we get the date filled in? You figure out what you want to do. It's what's ever easier. I just figured that would be easier for you to sign it. And then we would just wait for the information to, for me to fill it in. And then I could, kids could give it to back to Shane. Okay, done. So I've got it. So I will just sign it and put it through the slot. Good job. Got it. <laughs> there it goes. Good plan. Say, so, Peter. Yes. Did you, what was the date of that uh, email there or of that? Um... 584 drive through. Sorry, Vic. What what was the date of that that uh, 584 road permit? Uh, hold on. The road permit? You mean you're talking about the drive permit? permit? Drive permit. Uh, Sorry about that. Well, I mean, you know, Shane signed he applied, it up. He applied 514. Shane approved it 517. Okay. Right. Thanks. Okay. Um, any, other, any, any other matters or business to come before the uh, select board before we uh, go into our executive session? Yes, yeah, Sarah. I'll keep it brief. Um, Anita Krauth called me very upset. Um, she thinks she has served, she served, I think, 12 years on the solid waste uh, board and uh, she all she got was a you you go girl from the select board thanks for your service and then someone else was reappointed and um, I I told her that she's right and that I would bring this to the board and that maybe we could consider she said all she would like is a card saying thank from the select board saying thank you from your, for your long service. She also clarified that the reason why she quit the board was because controversy over small, uh, their obsession with small plastic things that during a pandemic. Anyway, I told her I would bring it to the select board and I'm bringing this to the select board. Oh, that would be great for us to send a card. So um, I think we should. <laughs> Me too. She's not wrong. And we should have been doing that with it's not wrong, but we should <laughs> doing that with every single person who serves and then steps down. We're not doing it. We should have some kind of a system where we can update it so that everybody who served us 
feels that their work has been acknowledged. I agree. It's kind of like a volunteer appreciation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So she wants a card, not a letter. Can we send her a nice letter? She wants acknowledgement. We can do it. Wants acknowledgement. It's yeah. Right. So. Well, why don't? Yeah. And, I, don't and wanna, I, know I don't want to give our assistant too many jobs to do, but if, if, right. you, if you could draft a nice letter and you can you can throw me into the bus, say, you know, make the letter for me on behalf of the select board and just say we're embarrassed that we we fail to acknowledge your years of service and we appreciate your effort on behalf of the town and. Perfect. Thank you very much. And yeah. yeah. And then fall on your sword. You could also say you could fall on your sword and say it's really, we become aware that we should be doing that for all volunteers in town. Right. <laughs> and I, actually, that's what Anita brought up in the conversation. She said that she feels as though volunteers are not given enough uh, credit and appreciation of the select board. So I can throw that in too. But I'm also going to order a bunch of cards. Good Perfect. deal. Thank you, Carrots. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Carrots. Yeah. Sarah, you're on top of it. Thank this. you, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm paid. You don't have to thank me. We want to. Well, it's, 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 it's a challenge because we've, yeah. we've done it at times in the past, but we've been inconsistent, and that's that's fair. All right. That's it. Yeah, but it's too bad to do it three months after the fact or whatever it's been. Oh, she'll be glad to know she has a policy. She made policy change at the select board. There level. you go. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, she's right. So we need an executive session, correct? No, we don't need one, at least for not tonight. Um, we, don't one, we don't need one for you, Phil, but I think we need one, don't we? Oh. Um, well, we didn't warn one. You didn't warn it that reason. way. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So I don't, it's okay. I can wait. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just say, I just want to give a quick update. I was in a seminar for an hour and a half um, on the uh, ARPA funds today. And the thing that became clear is that there's still a lot of stuff going on in Washington and all of the final guidance isn't out yet. So there's really nothing new that I can report. I think we're, we're going to be in a holding pattern here for a couple more weeks. Okay. That's it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Any other business? Anybody? Nope. Nope. Okay. So our uh, next meeting is. Our next meeting is. Our next meeting is. June 1st. Oh, wait, wait. I'm in July. Right. Yep, June 1st. And so and then, now we're we'll back to the first and third. We're back to the first and third. We have not set up a special meeting for the part fire department next month. We have said we will put them on the agenda, I believe, for the second meeting of the month. Is right. that what we agreed to the last time, I think? So the second meeting would be the 15th? Yep. The, yeah. Yes, the 15th. Is everyone going to um, be here? Because I'm going to be out of town that day, and I don't know where I'm going to be um, per se. We're taking a road trip, and so if I can make it, I will. But if not, will there be a quorum? Yeah. The first? Okay. I'll be there. I'm here. I'll be there. All right. My calendar is still up in the air, but I believe I blocked off that time. Yeah, so that should be okay. I do have I do have just one comment uh, about this fire department situation. Liz, you sent me that letter. Wasn't that the previous letter that he sent to us, or is that a new letter? It sounded like all the same stuff to me. Well, the, the, well you keep calling me Sarah. Me. I'm sorry. What, Liz? You keep saying Liz. I think you mean Sarah. No, I mean Liz. I didn't send you a letter. You didn't Did send me a letter, a copy of a letter about the fire department? Then I misread the email. I'm sorry. No, I don't think so. Did you? <laughs> there? No, I, there's only been one letter from, from, from Jeff. Of space, so I don't know. But it was in That's why it sounded the same, because it was the same letter. Is this the letter from Jeff? Yes. 
I think it's the same letter. Okay, same one letter. letter. I already saw. I don't know why I re-got it or I misunderstood it or whatever. I apologize. But my point is, the thing I wanted to talk about is, I think we need to seriously think about which way we're going in terms of the governance of the fire department. If we really are marching down the road of taking control of the fire department, that's sort of one one fork in the road. And we, we need to do that, I think, sooner rather than later. And we need to let them know that we're, I mean, they know we're thinking about it, but I just, I just think we can't leave that hanging out there for too long. And I'm willing to give them I'm willing to give them a little time. I mean, if they truly have three or four new members and they have this aggressive training schedule and, and other things, that's that's all good. But we've had a lot of promises in the past and they haven't come to fruition. So that's just that's just a comment by me for everybody to think about how we're gonna proceed. Yeah. There's no point in having uh in having endless meetings where they promise they're gonna do stuff. Uh I want to see some results, and I also want to see them cooperate with Montpelier and Waterbury. I know they don't want to. I know they don't want to participate in training. I know they don't. And, you know, I think what we can potentially do is use that as a perfect example of why we're thinking yeah. over control. Because I think, um, anyway. I'm sorry, Peter. I think probably we should put this, you know, this is kind of like a non warned item, um, and maybe we should put this on the next agenda to have some discussion amongst ourselves about exactly what you're saying, what direction. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, I disagree. I, I, I mean, I do not disagree. Right. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Or you agree. Yeah. <laughs> the double negative. I know it's bad English. I apologize. Mitch. Um, yeah. I'm just going to offer a very brief comment that might be apropos of nothing, but I was down at the Walter Kelly Park this afternoon um, repairing and putting up some signs and it turns out there was a fire call and two people came by and took trucks and went off somewhere. So Good. I don't know if that means anything, but there you go. Good. Did okay. you know who they were, Mitch? Did you know who the people were? No. Okay. Uh, so I think we are, I think we are adjourned. So we should put a, a select board discussion about the fire department on the agenda for our next meeting and then plan on uh, further discussion with the fire department and potentially uh, on Pillar and Waterbury for the second meeting. Yeah. Um, and, and are we going to have that executive meeting on the issue that we couldn't bring up tonight? Um, yeah, I can maybe rewarn that, Sarah. Okay. Uh, just one thing, you know, if you're going to have a conversation about the fire department, we're going to put that on the agenda. You're going to get people showing up to want to talk. You're not going to, you're not going to get the, you know, Gary Dillon and Bob Gallons, that type of thing, but people will want to show up and they will want to talk about it, you know, so we can't just make it a conversation among the select board itself. No, you understand? No, it's, that, right? public, it's a public meeting. Right. And, and it shouldn't be an executive session. So no, no, no. Whatever, whatever happens, happens. I understand that. I just want to keep the, I just want to keep us on track and keep the conversation going because, uh, you know, September is going to be a. I mean, the, the summer is going to get away from us like crazy here from Hot Airport, which I'm sure you all know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that and, and anybody who wants to volunteer to go over to Liz's house and put up screens, I'm sure she's welcome to help. I'm going to bring her over a fly swatter. <laughs> you could probably spray some of that some of that magic stuff in your in your headband there that'd probably drive the bugs away <laughs> okay everybody thank you thank you all very much and thank you have a good night bye. have a good night everybody thank bye. you bye, bye.